Okay, so here we are with our lighting and rendering with Redshift. I've got my dome light in here that I had earlier on, but I've just replaced the bitmap in there with a forest. Uh, and as you can see, I'm just swinging this around, rotating it, um, just so I can, you know, find a little pocket of light that feels like it's got a bit of contrast in it, um, something that feels like, uh, you know, it's going to give us a little bit of um, distance between. Uh, the log and it so we can knock it out of focus and you can see here that there's a little bit of light peeking through these trees here which which creates a bit of contrast which is great and um, usually what I like to do when I've got a dome light is um, is to create uh, an additional light source as well which kind of mimics the Sun so uh, the dome lights can be great um, but sometimes you want to just have that extra little bit of kick of light so what I do sometimes is create a, uh, a representation of where the sun might be uh, without using without using the redshift sun. You can you can kind of fake it uh, by using a physical uh, physical light. So I'm going to just pull down a physical light here, um, and in the light type, it kind of defaults to a very high intensity. In the light type, I'm going to create a, a directional light, which is going to essentially mimic the sun, and you can see it just automatically gave it a very strong rim there. Um, and now if I just orientate that around, bring the intensity down, orientate it around, uh, it's going to create uh, just that extra little bit of light spill onto, onto the log. So usually what I try and do is mimic where I think that sun is coming from in the, uh, in the actual environment map or, or um, in the live action plate, depending on what you're doing. And um, you can see here, I'm just going to bring the intensity up here just to create a little bit more uh, light. And that feels like it kind of balances out where the trees are a bit more in terms of brightness. It, it kind of matches a bit better. And it's casting some shadows here too. Um, so it's, it's uh, just given that extra little bit of detail um, that feels like, you know, we're, we're kind of lit from the top here. Um, so if I just give it a little bit of warmth, you can see some of the sunlight that's kind of coming in on that right hand side uh, is is giving us a little bit of um, a little bit of warmth. So just putting a little bit of saturation in that works quite nice. And I want to soften those shadows off as well because even though it's a sunny day, it seems like it's a bit overcast, uh, which is going to diffuse those shadows off. So I'm just going to create a little bit of uh, softness and rotate this around to try and uh, you know just just get it in line um, where everything else is. So pulling up our shader network here, the, the bump seems really, uh, really intense on that log right now. So I'm going to bring that down, um, just kind of experiment with different sizes on that. You know, sometimes you just have to get it optically right. Um, it's really, it's really a matter of taste. And uh, as you can see here, I'm just going to turn on that uh, displacement once again, uh, just to bring in some some more extra details from that displacement map, and uh, that's going to that's going to influence your your shadows and your highlights and break them up and make them feel um, all that much more realistic. So you can see here is the displacement map. Um, those bits, uh, those those brighter bits are gonna are gonna extend along the vectors of your of your normals, and those darker bits are gonna be inset. Um, and then uh, as we go up here to our settings in the Redshift render view. Uh, you can pop a LUT on there. Uh, you can pop, you know, different types of um, uh, lookup tables on to change your colors, change your mood, things like that. Sometimes I'd like to just, you know, get a general idea where I'm going um, before I get too far down the line. And uh, you've got some really amazing effects here, which is going to add some realism, like some bloom. This bloom from the back is just going to bleed onto the edge of that uh, trunk and make it make it feel nice and, and photographic, make it feel. Uh, like it's really embedded in there and adding some bokeh in there just to defocus the background uh, again if we we're shooting this on a 55 and we were pretty close to this uh, tree log you probably would have a considerable amount of bokeh on a on a sunny day like this because uh, you got a little light so um, i'm going to take down uh, the amount of this bokeh just a tiny bit and uh, you'll be able to see that you know bring it down to point one um, bring it all the way up to five. You know, you have a lot of kind of artistic license here that you can you can take. Uh, but I think you know somewhere around here, somewhere around 0.85 is is probably where we want to go. So that's looking 
nice and photographic for now. As, as you can see, you can actually pick where the bokka, uh, where the interest in that bokka is. Um, so I've clicked just in the middle of that log and you can see that, uh, you know, that's feeling pretty good. The one thing is that this bottom area feels really dark to me here. So I'm going to add a little light in here just to give it a bit of kick um, to kind of emulate what like a, a bit of secondary light bounce would be. It would probably be, you know, uh, you probably just give a little bit of secondary bounce up from from where that floor would be if you were that close to to the um to you know that bright of a day that close to the to the forest floor you'd have a little bit of a kick up so just gonna kind of art direct this a little bit um and uh enable my tie flow we can see here that the the particles are now back on um, our log. Um, these are our cubes for now and our camera move around the log is feeling nice and real. So if we kind of scrub along here, we get a pretty decent indication about where things are going. So you can see even though our particles are not showing up uh, in the render, they are in the viewport, but they're not showing up in the render. Uh, and what we forgot to do earlier on is go into TyFlow and take that mesh instance from event number one and paste that into event number two. So that's going to tell TyFlow and Redshift to 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 render that event. Um, it's going to uh, you know essentially give it a a mesh or a renderable uh, tag in in Redshift, and that's going to render. So uh, in the next one, we're going to cover how to get the materials onto this and do all our instancing nice and correct. <laughs>